Good morning. So today is your first lesson of the polynomials unit. To take your notes, you need to get out a notebook. Okay, so you're going to take notes on an own scrap sheet of paper, which may be different than you did in your math course because you may have received a packet. But in not sending home materials, you're just going to get out a scrap sheet of paper and take notes, uh, like as if I was writing on the board. Okay, so I have this polynomial right here. Okay, it has one, two, three, four terms. And I want to put this polynomial in standard form. So standard form means I rewrite these four terms from highest to lowest exponent. So my highest exponent is this to the third or cubed power. So that negative 7x to the third is going to be written first. And then the next exponent is the 2. So 3, 2, 1 in order of largest to smallest. So plus 10x squared. Remember to include the sign in front. Plus 4x and then the minus 5. So that polynomial is in standard form. And you don't necessarily have to have all of your answers in standard form, but only when it asks you. Okay? So let's also talk about some other vocab. Uh, the degree, so we'll bullet that, the degree of our polynomial is a degree 3. Okay? So therefore its name is a cubic polynomial, okay? It could be quartic if it was to the fourth power, okay, if that was the largest. If the largest was the two, it would be a quadratic. If the largest was a one, so even though there's no one there, there is a one. Remember, one is linear, okay? Remember all these vocab terms. And our leading coefficient is a negative 7. So leading, it's out front. Coefficient is the number in front of the variable. And then the other number at the end with no variable attached is called the constant. So the constant is a negative 5. Okay. And our leading term, last for vocab, the leading term, so as we said before, there are four terms. So one, two, three, four. So the leading term is the negative 7x to the third. It's the whole term, but the leading coefficient is just the number. Okay, so now let's look at another example. Uh, let's make one up. Let's say 4x minus x squared plus 9. Okay, so in standard form, okay, that would be negative x squared plus 4x plus 9. Remember, because it's degree 2, that means it's going to be the quadratic. We'll get there, but remember your quadratic form or format they want, remember, is the ax squared plus bx plus c. So when they ask you for this format, we just want to put it in standard form. Or it says put the x squared term first, then the x term, and then the uh, constant. All right, so we start the unit after all this vocab and formatting with the distributive property. So let's give an example. So our directions is going to be distribute. Okay, or it could say multiply because remember distributive property is multiplication over addition or subtraction. So let's do negative 2x times 10 minus 6x. Okay, so we distribute the negative 2x times 10. So negative 2x times 10 is a negative 20x. And then negative times negative here, distribute this term to the second term 
of this binomial, or this is a monomial, negative times negative positive, uh, 2 times 6, 12, and x times x. Here we didn't have an x to multiply, but when I'm doing x times x, we get x squared. And I know it's not in standard form, but we will leave it. So there's example number one. Let's make it a little bit more challenging and just add more terms. So example number two, let's say 5x squared times negative 8x squared plus 9x uh, plus 7. Okay? So again, distribute it, go slow. 5 times negative 8 is a negative 40. And then x times x, or rather x squared times x squared, we keep the base x and add the exponent. So 2 plus 2, 4. And now 5 times 9. x squared times x, now there is the 1 there. So we had 2, and then multiplying it by 1, 2 plus 1 will be x cubed. And then let me slide that over so I'm not covering it. Lastly, there's no x here, so I'm just multiplying the numbers. So 35 and bring it along that x squared. Okay? All right. Moving on to a different topic. Let's talk about the term evaluate or finding the value of an expression. So let's evaluate. Okay, the expression, let's say 6p squared minus 3p plus 5. Okay, and let's say when p equals 4. So I substitute the 4 in everywhere I see p. So it's going to be 6 times 4 squared minus 3 times 4 plus 5. Now this is where order of operations come into play. So a little thought bubble that's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAS. Remember exponents come first. So this is 6 times 16 minus 3 times 4 which is 12 plus 5. Now 6 times 16, if you have a calculator, you should all have a graph and calculator. If you don't see me, we can somehow get someone from the school to bring one to you. We can do it by hand. So off to the side, 16 times 6, way back to middle school. 6 times 6, 36, carry the 3. 6 times 1, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 96. Minus 12 plus 5. Now addition and subtraction we do in order of left to right. So if you want to, still by hand, subtract 12, 6 minus 2, 4, 9 minus 1, 8, so this is 84. Last plus 5 is 89. Okay, now let's move to operations with polynomials. So let's add, let's make it basic 6x plus 3. We're going to add it to, I don't know, 5x minus 7. So if I'm adding two binomials, I want to add the like term. So 6x plus 5x is 11x. And a positive 3 added to a negative 7 is a negative 4. And you can always check that you're right here too. So say you plug in a 1, right? For x, 6 times 1, 6 plus 3 is 9. 5 times 1, 5 minus 7 is a negative 2. When I add these two, I get negative 7. So, um, or actually not negative 7, positive 7, because that's bigger. So now checking over here, 11 times 1 is 11, minus 4 is 7. It works. So you can always check your answer algebraically by evaluating it to see if you get the same number. All right, so now that we did addition, let's do subtraction, but let's freeze it. So let's do subtract uh, negative 2x squared minus 1 from uh, negative 7x squared minus 2x. Okay, so order is important. Subtract this from this. So this is written first. 
So negative 7x squared minus 2x, and I will use the parentheses. So that binomial, then we're going to take away negative 2x squared minus 1. With the addition sign, you don't necessarily have to worry about distributing the positive through because it's not going to change signs. But rewrite the first one down, and then distribute the negative through, because negative times negative is positive negative times negative, positive. The only like terms are these x squares. So negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5x squared, and then I'm going to put it in standard form. So the x term first, then the 1. Okay, so adding, subtracting, um, and then last, let's say um, that b equals 2 minus y squared and c equals, um, let's say, 4 y squared minus y. And I want you to find 2b plus 3c. So that means we're going to do 2 Substitute this binomial in for b, 2 times 2 minus y squared plus 3c. So where c is, we're going to substitute the 4y squared minus y. So this just brings up a good point, too. Anytime you're doing the delta math assignments, you want to be doing that on a scrap sheet of paper. Even though I'm not collecting the paper, you're going to need scrap paper in order to do the workout before you type in your answer. So let's double this or distribute the 2. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2y squared. Distribute the 3. So 3 times 4, 12y squared minus 3y. Combining the like terms, the y squared is negative 2 plus 12 is 10. y squared stays the same. These are not like terms, so I will put in standard form even though it didn't say I had to. And there would be my final answer. I just need to write them down. Okay, so these instructional videos are going to be short. Okay, remember you have the videos in Delta Math if you need some help, as well as the examples that are there. And remember to reach out to Mr. Hart and I with any other additional questions. Have a good day.